In this lecture, we are going to wrap up our study of acid-base balance by looking at disorders. The two main organs that are in charge of acid-base balance are the kidneys, because remember the kidneys directly control the secretion of bicarb and hydrogen ions, and the lungs, because the lungs control the excretion of CO2 through our respiratory rate. We also know that acidosis and alkalosis will occur. If the pH is below 7.35, we would expect acidosis. And if it was above 7.45, we would expect alkalosis. Remember that the pH limits for life, however, are 7.0 to 7.8, and we are looking at arterial blood pH. When we have acid-base imbalances, they will be either the acute phase, which is the initial phase. This is when we first have the problem in the system. This would happen within minutes to hours, and we have a pH change that occurs. Compensated is more chronic. So compensated is going to occur when it's persisting. So it's persisting for several hours and days. And when it's compensated, what happens is if the lungs are failing, for example, or the lungs aren't working properly, then the kidney is going to try to jump in and buffer and maintain the pH. Or if there's a problem in the kidneys or with acid production by the body, the lungs are going to jump in and try to buffer. So when we look at these imbalances, we have respiratory and metabolic. Respiratory disorders are going to happen when we look at the CO2. Typically, it's a problem in the lungs where you can't exhale and get the CO2 out. It could happen if too much CO2 was being generated in the tissues. And so we're normally looking at those CO2 levels to figure out if it's respiratory. Metabolic is anything other than the lungs. So if the cause of the condition is anything other than the lungs, it's called metabolic. We make acids every single day. So this could be something that happens like ketoacidosis, if we're making too many ketones. This can happen if we have a problem with our bicarb. Remember, we wanted to maintain that 20 to 1 ratio of my base bicarb to carbonic acid. So maybe there's a problem and I don't have enough base, or there's a problem in my kidneys. So when we look at respiratory, we're looking at failure of the lungs. So there's most likely it'll be a problem in the respiratory system, and we look at the CO2. We know our normal range of our arterial blood CO2 is 35 to 45. And we also know that if we were to have a respiratory acidosis, that would occur because we had too much CO2. We were retaining it. So when CO2 is in our blood, it combines with water and it forms carbonic acid. And then that breaks down and produces hydrogen ions and some bicarb. Well, when those hydrogens go up, that's going to cause our pH to fall. And so this is respiratory acidosis. Well, what could cause a, an acute change? Well, if your patient is in cardiac arrest, if they're not breathing, they're retaining CO2. And so they'll go into respiratory acidosis, which should be corrected once you get their heart beating again. Maybe your patient has drowned and they, you know, you're giving them CPR and mouth to mouth. And so drowning could also cause this to go up in the short term you're more likely gonna see the compensated or chronic form. So these are your respiratory diseases, your COPDs, pneumonia, emphysema, chronic bronchitis. And so in these patients, they're in this compensated form, their CO2 levels are too high. So we know that when we're looking at this acidosis, that the CO2 is going to be greater than 45 because we had just said that we're retaining CO2 which means that our pH is going to be less than 7.35. Now we'll talk more in a minute about how the um, kidneys are going to compensate for this when we're in the chronic stage. But the kidneys are gonna be trying to buffer all those hydrogens. If we had respiratory alkalosis, remember this is due to maybe a hyperventilation occurring, maybe an anxiety attack or a drug overdose, 
And so for respiratory alkalosis, now we look at the CO2 and we know that the CO2 is going to be low because you're exhaling it, you're getting rid of it. And so therefore, we look at our equation, it's the same equation, but now it goes to the left and now we're having too few hydrogen ions. So we're in an alkalosis state. And for that one, you probably more often see an acute form. And really, if someone's having a panic attack or hyperventilating, you just have them breathe into a paper bag. Because what they'll do is when they hold it up over their mouth, they'll rebreathe their own CO2 and they'll raise their CO2 levels. Now, you don't give them a plastic bag unless you really don't like them. So we're looking at respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis and what's happening. Again, acidosis, typically hypoventilation. You're not, ex you're not ventilating. So again, we could have our respiratory diseases. We could have an obstructive airway. It could be an overdose. Um, and so when we're going to acidosis, we're going to worry about the coma setting in, how it affects our brain, headaches. When we're in alkalosis, Again, more likely hyperventilation, anxiety, possibly a pulmonary embolism, and so, or a ventilator that's not set properly. So we have this more hyperventilation that can occur. When we're looking at metabolic, again, it's anything other than the CO2, anything other than the lungs. And when we look at metabolic, our main indicator is bicarb. So we're looking at our bicarb, and different books have different numbers. So I'm gonna use 26 because your book uses that. That's our normal range of bicarb. And remember, this was my 20 to one ratio. Well, if my bicarb goes up, maybe now I have a 30 to one ratio. You could probably understand how that would make me more alkaline. Or if my bicarb should fall, and maybe now my ratio is 10 to one, now I don't have enough bicarb, so that's gonna make me in a more acidic state. So when we're looking at the acidosis and alkalosis, you know, what could be happening? Well, you're probably going to see metabolic acidosis more commonly. So typically you're making a bunch of acids. So we talked about the ketoacidosis, especially DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, that could cause it. You could have a renal failure where you're not getting rid of the hydrogen, so impaired hydrogen excretion at the kidneys, you're not able to get, out, get it out. Or maybe with severe diarrhea, you can lose a lot of bicarb, so now your bicarb is too low. So the acute would be the minutes and hours range of these conditions, where the compensated would be looking at hours and days of this occurring. When we look at the alkalosis occurring, that could happen from too much bicarb. So if your patient is um, constipated, it could happen. It could also happen if you lose the hydrogen, in the example of vomiting, and you're losing lots of HCL and losing hydrogen from your stomach acid. And so when we're looking at our acidosis for metabolic, we know the pH is low and we expect the bicarb to be low. If we look at the alkalosis, now we know our pH will be higher and we know that our bicarb will also be higher as well. And so this is another picture I put in here because we need to also talk about how does the compensation happen? We've been talking about acute and chronic but we need to review really quickly how the other system compensates. So remember, if we're in a metabolic condition, if we have an acid and we want our lungs to buffer, so we use the same equation, but now we're revisiting a previous lecture where we looked at how the lungs buffer. We're not going to have the lungs be the cause, we want them to fix it. And so we have this equation. Well, if we were to have um, too many hydrogen ions, so let's say we're in an acidosis state, now we have way too many hydrogens. Well, how do we buffer? Well, we combine them with bicarb and make carbonic acid. It goes to our lungs and we get rid of it. We will hyperventilate. That's how the lungs buffer. Well, when we hyperventilate, that will probably lower our PCO2 levels. So my PCO2 levels will be abnormal if I'm in a compensated state. If it's acute, the lungs haven't had time to try to jump in and buffer. So if we look at this again, well, what about if I'm in a um, alkalosis state? 
Okay, well, alkalosis, I don't have as many hydrogens. Now I want to make more. So what do I do? I hold on to CO2 in my blood so I can generate more hydrogen. So the way my lungs buffer is they hypoventilate. They retain CO2. Well, if we look at the kidneys, if we look at our respiratory conditions, we have our acute and our compensated. If the problem is in the lungs, how do the kidneys buffer? Well, remember that your renal buffers for acidosis were to get rid of hydrogen, so you increased your hydrogen secretion, but you would hold on to bicarb. So your bicarb levels probably go up because your lungs, excuse me, your kidneys are trying to compensate. They're trying to fix it because the lungs aren't working. So in this lecture, you have to really understand what the cause of the condition is and how the other organs are going to jump in and compensate or fix it. So let's put it together. Let's say we have respiratory acidosis occurring. So we know it's acidosis, so the pH is less than 7.35. If it's respiratory, we know that I'm not getting rid of CO2, so my CO2 is going to be too high. Now, if it's acute, then it's within minutes and hours, my kidneys haven't had to buffer yet, so my bicarb would be normal. What if it's chronic? How do the kidneys buffer when we're in acidosis? Well, we said that they will hold on to bicarb. So if it was the acute form, understand that the bicarb would be normal. It would be in my normal range of somewhere between 22 and 26. But now that it's elevated, I know it's compensated. So notice that I look at my pH and I know I'm acidic, and now I have to know which of these conditions, high CO2 or high bicarb, would make me acidic. And the answer is if my CO2 is too high. So then why is the bicarb high? Because the kidneys are buffering. If I'm in respiratory alkalosis, you know what the pH is. If it's because of my lungs, then now I'm hyperventilating, so my CO2 is too low. Again, if it's acute, my bicarb would be normal, which is what it most likely will be, by the way, is you're most likely going to see the acute form of this. However, if my kidneys had a buffer for alkalosis, now they're going to try to get rid of the base. So my bicarb actually falls. So again, if it was acute, this would be normal. So I'll just write normal. And I would only have two abnormal number sets. If it's compensated, all three are off. Metabolic acidosis. I know my pH is low. It's metabolic, so it's my bicarb. My bicarb is too low. I don't have enough bicarb. How do the lungs buffer? in response to an acid. Well, we just said that when we have the acid, so I'll write the equation again. All right, so now I have too many hydrogen ions. What do I do? I use them to make carbonic acid. I convert them into CO2 and I breathe faster to get rid of it. So my CO2 levels fall. Now, if it was acute, my CO2 levels would be normal if it was the acute form. Because acute, only values that are off is the pH and then whichever organ system is causing the problem. Compensated, all three are off because one's off because it's trying to fix it. Metabolic alkalosis, I know I'm more alkaline, therefore it's metabolic, my bicarb's too high, how do my lungs buffer? Now they try to hold on to the CO2 to generate more acid. So it's very, very important that you know the numbers and you understand how to interpret it if you see this. So this is from your book. Again, if we have a decrease in pH, we know we could use the chemical buffers, but we're gonna focus here on how we compensate. So again, if we have our acid-base imbalance, we could have you know, more hydrogens or we could be losing the bicarb. And so we know that our kidneys jump in in acidosis and try to get rid of hydrogen and hold on to bicarb. And we know that the lungs are gonna to try to get rid of CO2 
to flush it out. We know for, if we're looking at an alkalosis condition, that what's going to happen in our kidneys now is they're gonna get rid of bicarb and they're going to hold on to hydrogen. And we also know that our lungs will buffer by slowing things down so that CO2 can be used to make hydrogen. There's one more thing we have to mention called the anion gap. Now you have to understand that the anion gap only matters in metabolic acidosis. So we're only gonna look at it in metabolic acidosis. You ignore it for everything else. And an anion is a negatively charged ion. And so it really gives you an idea of those. And the anions we're looking at are chloride and bicarb. So the anion gap is equal to your plasma sodium minus the chloride plus the bicarb, because they're the most um, numerous anions. So it's normally around three to 11. If the anion gap changes and starts to go up, then it can indicate the cause of metabolic acidosis. So we could get metabolic acidosis if we lost bicarb. Maybe your patient has diarrhea on top of other things. Maybe they're diabetic, they're in renal failure, they have diarrhea, so you don't know if the acidosis is a ketoacidosis, if it's something from the kidneys, or if it's from the diarrhea. And so what this does is help you pinpoint the cause of metabolic acidosis. If it was lost due to something like diarrhea or even in the kidneys, we know that for every bicarb that's left, that a chloride comes back. So if we lost 10 bicarb, we would gain 10 chlorides. So we might change our actual numbers here, but we would not change the anion gap. So I'm making this up now. Let's pretend the anion gap that we have, let's say we have 30 sodiums. And then to keep it very simple, let's say I have 10 chloride and I have 10 bicarb. So this anion gap would be 10, 30 minus 20. Okay, so now let's say the patient has a bout of diarrhea. So now what's happening is their bicarb has fallen to five, but for every bicarb you lose, you hold on to a chloride. So the chloride has gone up to 15. Well, I still have the exact same anion gap. Yeah, I changed the bicarb. That's why I'm in acidosis. But the anion gap did not change. So it's used to try to figure out the source of the metabolic acidosis. So if it goes up, it means that there's a problem that you're basically using up your bicarb to buffer. You're not excreting it. It's not necessarily happening just from the kidneys it, or just from the diarrhea. There's something else going on. And so we know that we can have our fluid, our interstitial fluid is too negative. And so we call it anion gap metabolic acidosis. So this could be the ketoacidosis. It could be failure, respiratory failure, poisons, aspirin, antifreeze poisoning. All of those can cause this. So I know it's a lot. You have to slow down. You might have to go back and rewatch some lectures. That was my dog. I apologize. There's a couple ways to think about it. I always say check the pH first because that's going to tell you if you're heading down to an acidosis or an alkalosis. And then you can choose either check the CO2 or check the bicarb. It's up to you. I usually go to the CO2. So if I'm in an acidosis state and my CO2 is elevated, I know that's respiratory acidosis because if I'm retaining CO2, I'm expected to have too many hydrogens to be in an acidosis state. If my bicarb is normal, I'm in acute respiratory acidosis. If my bicarb has gone up because my kidneys are buffering the acid, they're holding on to bicarb, now I know the kidneys are trying to compensate. If I look at my CO2 and it's not elevated, now I know the acidosis cannot be due to my lungs. So now I know that it's, it's metabolic, it's not due to the lungs, so now my CO2 is normal, it's acute, because the lungs did not have to buffer. If I look at my CO2 and now I see a change, now I know this is compensated because my lungs are trying to buffer all those acids. Then I check the anion gap. And if it's up, I know it's due to some issue with the acids that are being generated or buffered. If not, then it's probably due if my patient has diarrhea to that. If it's alkalosis and I check the CO2, if it's my lungs, my CO2 will be low. And then I check the bicarb. If it's normal, it's acute. 
If there's a change, then I have something more chronic occurring. So you can pick up whichever way you want to to figure it out, but it's basically a flow chart and thinking about what is the cause and is the other system jumping in or not. And I put this table in here if this is helpful, and we'll use the numbers from class as we go over this, but it might be helpful to look at this. And then we do a couple examples. Let's say I have two situations. So I'll say patient A has a pH of 7.30. They have a pCO2 of 52 mmHg, and they have a bicarb of 30. And that would be milli equivalents per liter. And then let's look at patient B. And patient B has a pH of 7.50. Their pCO2 is 50. And their bicarb is 32. What's going on? What's the diagnosis? So how would you do it? Well, let's do A. You look at A and the pH is 7.3. So we know we got acidosis. We have to figure out, is this respiratory or metabolic? So I check the CO2. A CO2 of 52, would that make me acidic? And the answer is yes. And if that answer is yes, I know it's respiratory. Now my second question, this is respiratory acidosis. Is this acute or compensated? I look at the bicarb. If the bicarb was normal, it's acute. Bicarb's elevated. Why is the bicarb elevated? Because I'm in acidosis and my kidneys buffer acidosis by retaining bicarb. So this is compensated. Let's look at this one, similar numbers. Notice the pH. I'm in alkalosis. Would a pCO2 of 50 make me alkaline? The answer is no, so I move on. Would a bicarb level of 32 make me too alkaline? Yes, this is metabolic alkalosis. Come back to the CO2. Is it normal? No. Therefore, this is compensated metabolic alkalosis because now the lungs are holding on to CO2 because they're trying to generate more acid and buffer to fix the situation. So this is something that needs some practice. There's some practice problems in your lab manual to do and try to do those um, before lab if possible. And so this wraps up our acid-base balance chapter.